Today we're building a air compressor training unit. This is using an XE145M controller, five indicator lights showing solenoids, five. For this project, we're gonna need 120 volts from the wall outlet, a fuse to protect everything, a 120 volt to 24 volt DC power supply to power our controller, an emergency stop switch to cut the 120 volts coming in from the wall and the 24 volts to the controller so the controller knows the e-stop has been hit. We're going to need a KM1 contactor, a KM2 contactor, and a KM3 contactor to quote marks start the motor that doesn't exist and also a KM4 contactor to quote marks start the fan motor that I'm going to install to cool equipment later on. We're going to also need some auxiliary contactors, some indicator lights, some green phoenix connectors, some variable resistors or potentiometers to vary the pressures and temperatures in different parts of the compressor. We're going to need the controller itself and maybe some wire. All right, when you start, you want to have the first thing you want to do is 120 volt current flow. You're also going to need a 120 volt AC to 24 volts DC power supply to power the controller and this is only really used to power the controller. You're also going to use these KM1 contactors, also KM2 and KM3 contactors. These three contactors are used to start the, air quotes, main motor in a star delta starting system and this is to reduce the inrush current when starting a large motor that normally pulls a very high amount of amperage when starting. The star delta starting slow, starts it more slowly so it starts with much much less inrush current. You're also going to need some auxiliary contactors that are, that are going to be there's these are part of the star delta starting system and it's, it's explained in another video. The three contacts shown right here are for closing the contacts between the three phases meant to start the main motor. The next one, the fourth one, is the normally open contacts. This is an extra bonus feature on this contactor specifically, meant to close normally open contacts when the contactor pulls in. And the A1 and A2, shown all the way on the right of the contactor, are the 120 volt solenoids that actually makes the contactor pull in when sent 120 volts to the contactor from the controller. And those are normally on top of the contactor in a large industrial type contactor. We're going to size up the controller to the box that we're going to be using. We're also going to put our 120 volt indicator lights on top. Normally these will be used to show that 120 volts is being sent from the controller to a solenoid of some sort, either the contactors or load solenoid or condensate drain, basically solenoid valves, and we're going to use them to show that the controller is actually trying to do these things while it's running. It looks like the e-stop is is not going to fit properly in the this hole that happened to come with this box. Look, this training unit was just given to me. I think when my boss gave it to me, he didn't really intend for me to build this or do anything with it, but with it. so he just gave me scraps. So instead, we're going to just move this e-stop over here. And all the top five variable resistors or potentiometers are all going to be for pressure. The bottom three are going to be for temperature. We're going to outline where the controller goes on the... I'm lining up the e-stop, I guess. This isn't really... I'm not sure why I put this in the video. This, this is all being voiced over after the fact, because I apparently 
lost all the audio that I thought I was recording while I was recording this two hours of footage of me putting this box together. I'm outside with a stepper bit. I'm going to drill some holes for the 120 volt indicating lights and the e-stop. They all, they all happen to be the same size, including the e-stop. Uh, got a splinter on my hand. So in the case that you work for a company that values safety, and for your safety, I hope that you do, you really want to start protecting yourself in all cases, even at home, and use your safety gloves when applicable. We're going to need a drill for our stepper bit. Of course, our safety McLarses and our hearing aid where applicable. Oh, God, look at me. I can't even hold this drill straight. I'm so freaking weak. At first, I thought it would be a good idea to use this thin grinding blade. But it's not digging through enough. I ended up drilling holes in each corner of the where the controller's going to sit and using those holes to get in with my um, hacksaw so that I could actually square out the receptacle with my hacksaw. Right now, this fuse that I have in here, you can't really see because this fucking camera's blurry as fuck. It's a 5 amp fuse. It's properly sized for an actual 160 kilowatt machine with contactors that are properly sized for that machine. But you really should get a, I need to get a smaller fuse for this small training unit. The black wire is the 120 volt hot coming in. It's got to go through the fuse to protect the rest of the system, and that's what I'm doing right here. The white part coming in of the 120 volt is the neutral. This is the other side of the 120 volt two wire system, or three wire system if you count the ground. Sending that neutral down to this, down to the last four terminals on the this terminal board, if you can see, they're all four connected by these four as you can see, they're all connected by these these four metal pieces that connect them all together. So the four on the left on the bottom and the four on the right on the bottom are all connected in a group of eight so that the neutrals all connected there are are interconnected. If they don't have the strips up top as shown, they're just connected across each other only, not in groups of four. And all these white wires shown as connecting the neutral to the contactors and all the way over to the indicator lights. All of these pieces that are connected take 120 volts. They got the 120 volts neutral. All they need is the hot which I'm connecting up on top. The other end of the hot is coming through the top of the fuse. One end of it is going to go to the 120 volts AC to 20 volt, 24 volt DC power supply to power the DC for the controller. There's also going to be another wire coming out the top of the fuse, as you see here, to go to the controller and all the wires coming out of the top left of the controller are going to be firing off to power all of these indicator lights and the contactors that they're connected to. You can see them right here. You can also see one of them's going through the e-stop on the bottom right of the left side of the panel to cut off the 120 volts going to all the solenoids and the contactors if you hit the e-stop. I'm also wiring in my potentiometers. And this is where I show my 
sweet ass soldering skills. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And these are my potentiometers wired in to the analog. So potentiometers are, they're changing resistances based on the dial that you're turning on the potentiometer. And they're changing up and down pressure and temperature in the analog input part of the controller. Let's start it up and see how it goes. It normally doesn't start up this quickly, not this model controller, not nearly this quickly. Uh, I have my e-stop press, so I'm going to pull it out, boop, hit my reset, and it looks like the unit's ready to start. These two lights are partially on, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second. start button, the unit starting, the green and yellow light go on, right is KM3 contactor, it actually makes KM1 go on and then after 10 seconds it goes off and the white light goes on which is KM2. If you see here these blue and red and color lights that are a little bit on, they're getting 36 volts AC and 41 volts AC from the top left controller, the triac outputs. It's getting partial voltage normally from a triac. It's like, it's called ghost voltage, but it's partial voltage, and that's why they're partially illuminated. Whenever they're normally getting turned on, they're getting the whole 120 volts, and they will illuminate entirely and become very bright. And that's 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 all I have. Uh, sorry, I had to voice over everything, but I lost all my audio when I was recording for some reason. If you like the video, hit like. If you uh, want to subscribe, cool. If not, oh well. Uh, thanks for watching.